<laughs> Hello, we are super, super happy. Whoa, I just bonked my microphone. We are super, super happy to see you guys today. I am ready to write. We have, uh, it's funny because just as Robert and I came on, uh, and Robert, Michelle, and I came on, we were talking about, um, I, I had something awesome on my doorstep when I came back from the grocery store this morning. So I'm going to do a little unboxing. And then Robert was like, I have something awesome that arrived the other day. And <laughs> I have the box beside me, but I'm using it for the first time today. So uh, we'll I'm, super to that in due course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. And then Michelle's like, I shall check the van for something awesome. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put a bow on Rosa and unbox her. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, so let's do our intros while uh, while we're here. We might as well. Um, so, I'm going to start with you, Michelle. Tell us a little about you and your awesome channel. All right, I'm Michelle Schusterman. I write young adult and middle grade novels, and my channel is writing workshops, traditional publishing chat, and writing blogs. Thank you so much for being here. As always, Robert, tell us a little about you and your awesome channel. Well, my channel is the Story Detective, and uh, I put various forms of storytelling under a Sherlockian microscope and break down the craft in minute detail and give it to the viewer to hopefully make their craft journey easier. And uh, new videos are in the works. I just need to get a little free from some of the other stuff I'm working on in order to actually film them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is kind of funny. We were, um, we were talking a little bit about this and I do, I want to talk about this idea of, like just being overwhelmed with your to-do list of all the things that we must all constantly do. So that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about today and maybe talk about some strategies for making that a little better. Um, but there are times, and I will say, I'm definitely feeling this like in the last couple of weeks, especially where I just feel like buried in my to-do list, buried in my to-do yes. list. Avi says, hi, friends. There's no box big enough to contain Rosa. She is a <laughs> gift, though. Love, 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 love that. Uh, did, I reintroduce, did I already introduce myself? I can't remember. If not, hi, I'm Lisa Daly. I'm your host today. Actually, we're all hosts today. Uh, and on my channel, we talk about how to write a book you're super proud of and get it published. And I am very excited to get stuff going today. Because yesterday I ran into a little snag again. Well, again, with today's topic, the massive to-do list that threatens to eat you alive. I had I realized yesterday I'm leading for leaving for Reader's Take Denver in a week, and I had not ordered my books yet, which is way late. And some of them I had stock of at home, so I should be fine. But there are there's a one title at least that I know I'm going to need more of, and then there's another one where I have not, or I don't have any in stock. And I'm, and so I was trying, Amazon was going to be too late. Uh, and so Barnes and Noble with the little shipping bump is going to be able to do it on time. But I just had, but then there was some file issue yesterday because I'm doing a special edition. Like it was just like, I was just grinding and starting to feel super overwhelmed. So so I want to talk about handling that kind of stuff. All right. Let's say hi to our friends in the chat today. Hello, RC. Here first today. Very nice. Uh, very nice. Good morning, Devin. So glad to see you. Victoria, we are super happy you are here today. Daisy's here. Look at this. we got a great crowd today. Daisy's here. We are super glad to see you. Swinton, good morning. Avi's here. Uh, Regina here. Hello. Super glad to see you today. Maz is here. Good afternoon from Maz to Maz. Hello, Miss <laughs> Texas G. We are super glad to see you today. John is here. Back later, going to eat. Thanks for letting us know, John. <laughs> we appreciate it. I know, right? I too am going to eat. I ran out and got breakfast this morning. So, And when I came back, there was a giant package waiting for me. So when we come back from our first sprint, I'm going to open it and tell you guys what it is. I'll probably do a little pre-open just so you don't have to watch me like stabbing at it with pictures. But I know what it is and I'm super excited. I so I know you what it is. <laughs> I know, right? We'll do, our, we'll do all our exciting reveals uh, when we come back from our warm-up sprint. Uh, before we go, you guys, let us know what you're going to be working on in the chat today. And we'll talk about it when we come back. What, uh, what are you going to be working on today, Robert? Um, I'm going to be working on my own manuscript today. I'm far enough ahead on the client stuff. 
old deadline habits are kicking in. So I usually push ahead a little bit. And once I start to feel in the zone and uh, a comfort zone and border that I'm far enough ahead, then I can start working on other things and integrating, which is what yeah. I'm doing today. Yay. Nice. Good job. How about you, Michelle? What are you working on today? Uh, I've got a ghostwriting project. Outlining. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I am going to be working still on edits and, um, and trying to resolve my Barnes and Noble file issue. They did like go down for maintenance yesterday, almost immediately after I was having problems. So I'm kind of wondering if that was related. I hope it was and that it's all fixed this morning, but, uh, yeah, there's that. So I'm going to try to do that. I have been, well, we'll talk more about this after the break, actually. Okay. Let's do our five minute warm up sprint. We don't want to. We'll talk, we'll talk coping mechanisms later. All right, everybody. So we're going to start with five minutes on the clock. You can use this time to open up your document, get yourself ready to write today or to do whatever, edit or doing whatever you're going to do today. Get a nice giant vat of caffeine or your breakfast or whatever else. And we're going to put five minutes up on the clock. And that starts right now. Here we go. Getting ready for our first sprint in three, two, one.
All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, let us know in the chat what you guys are working. I realize I just did not put a banner up. So anybody who was coming in late, we just saw a bunch of us with a timer with no helpful mm -hmm. information at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so let us know in the chat, you guys, what you are working on today. I am going to be um, taking care of some client work and I'm trying to solve this thing with Barnes and Noble and a million other things. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so that's what I will be doing today. Author stuff. But first, I got a big package and I'm super excited. We can't even see it. <laughs> so I'm going to start opening it. And while I'm doing that, Robert's going to tell you about his super secret surprise that he's got going today. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I just put this on the dog. Sorry, Odie. Oh, no. For Odin. I know. I'm talking to Bear. The box. Ooh. Ooh. Recognizes the name, but it's a fairly elegant looking box that it came in. It is. <laughs> Are you guys package nerds too? Like yeah. I did a, half yeah. my video on the um on the Ozio keyboard was about how much I love their packaging because I'm such a dork. Okay, I, sorry. I Robert. love a good uh good unboxing. And inside was this, which is the quirky writer. This is the edition. It is. And, uh, once I saw the black and gold, I knew I had to grab this one. I've wanted one of these for a while. It's actually solid oh metal. Goodness. It's not plastic, uh, which is nice. Wow. Uh, the I keys feel that. really tight. It's mechanical and very clacky. So um, <clears throat> the knobs work. One, you can program them for whatever you want. But right now, like one uh, adjusts volume and the other one scrolls. Uh, the little tab actually is a return thing if you want to hit it like a typewriter. <gasps> Get so out! I love that. Probably as much like a typewriter as any keyboard that I've had so far. That's uh, incredible. Not exactly cheap, but it's it's nice. No. It feels really yes. nice. Too. What what is that? Oh, yeah. uh, I know you said not exactly cheap, but what does that run? The um, this one was about three hundred. You can get the regular one for one ninety nine on Amazon, which is just their average version. Mm -hmm. But the special editions run a little bit more. And they come out with them like once a year. I think last year they had like a pink and a mint color. This year they have a white and a black with gold. Well, pink and mint sounds like Lisa. I does yeah. sound like Lisa, doesn't it? They I know you retro, like a 1950s car. So uh... oh, that's cool. Oh, I love that. I totally love that. Uh, all right. I I really that's absolutely fantastic. Pink yeah. and mint. That's for me, man. All right. Hope I hope I don't just scrape the oh, it's on the back. Looks really so, sharp too. I know, right? I, <laughs> so, how's the feel of it, Rob? It feels really nice as far as mechanical keyboards. I mean, they all have a nice sense of travel and clockiness. But I have to say, you know, the Asios have been my favorite so far. This yeah. one actually feels a little bit tighter. I'm not sure mm. if that's because of the keys or the the switches, but it has a it has a really good feel. I like it. I and love that. Aside from the you know the keys where the um, type like little uh, fingers or whatever come up in a typewriter, there are typewriters in the past that were pretty flat like this. Right. A couple of typewriter uh, collecting things that are on the internet and I've, I've seen the history of like various typewriters and they were making them just like keyboards and computers today where they would get smaller, more compact. There's uh -huh. one that's getting flat that's a couple of inches tall that fits in a little metal case. If I ever find one of those in good condition, I'd like to add one of those to my keyboard museum because there's something <laughs> out there that I never knew about. <laughs> That is awesome. I love that you say the keyboard museum because I know that you are huge, huge like keyboard fan slash collector yeah, and that we display case with like computers and keyboards throughout history I, I think i would have like a little museum just because there's so much interesting stuff out there throughout yeah typewriters the early computers and i have a few early word processors and computers but there's a lot out there that i'd never have room for if i wanted to buy them all <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. This thing is still in its saran wrap, but it has escaped its deal. It's what? Wow. Oh my gosh. It's huge. It is oh, huge. Cool. It is huge. It'll go. It's the That's same awesome. size. As, huh? 
Would you, awesome. sorry, would you say thank you? I'm going to, so I'm working on the videos for my course right now. And I wanted to have the book cover um, behind me, like I do, you know, for my other books. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, so I'm super excited about it. Also, there's something about having a giant canvas of your book cover that, for me at least, makes me feel like super yeah, that spa is that inspired. Is. And yeah, I love that. Um, you want to be able to have all the things that you've done that inspire you. And that's, yeah. that's a cool thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the funny thing is, is so I, this is not the first one that I have done. Um, I use this place called Canvas Champ and um, it's like as inexpensive to cut, to get like a giant canvas, um, you know, uh, you know, on a hard, sorry, on a hard frame, it costs the same amount that it would cost to like do like a big poster at Kinko's. It's like, Usually, I mean, they have sales all the time. It's like I spent between $25 and $40. Like, it's really inexpensive. And wow. it feels like, right, your book covers feel like art. So for me, I I love it. All right, let's go through the um, through comments. Miss Texas, she also wants that keyboard. I, I do, too. I, now, I especially want it now that I understand that it comes in mint green and pink. <laughs> um I, so probably not. Probably sales tax is going to be sort of the thing. Devin loves that old look. I do too. Daisy says, I stumbled upon the keyboard community on YouTube. Didn't realize Robert was a part of it. Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people collect keyboards and typewriters and retro stuff. And uh, there's a couple on Instagram that have like retro typewriters and older things that you know, they're demonstrating them all, all the time. These guys just, you know, it's their passion and they have like pristine looking typewriters that I would never imagine existed. It's like really nice. Love that. I love that. Love that. Uh, Regina gets the Eagle Eye Award today. Is that a bust of Sherlock <laughs> Holmes in your background? Story Detective says, yes, yeah, absolutely. various home stuff that you don't see around the room and uh, <laughs> even some stuff in the closet that's not currently on display. So. I love that. I love that. Oh, Miss Swift is here. Hello. We are super glad to see you today. All right, everybody. Well, now that we've done our little unboxing, Michelle, you have, I, Michelle, we, at the very beginning of the stream, Robert and I were, were like, uh, Michelle, you're going to have to just look around the van for something. Okay. <laughs> just put a bow on, we'll just put a bow on. The rest. crackers. You will oh, unbox them. Unbox a box of crackers. Love it. <laughs> no, I don't think it. I don't think it's ever been done on the stream before. It probably has actually. They were we're a group of snackers. Um, okay, so let's do. Oh, here we go. So Hippio Tech does videos just on keyboards and has a million subscribers. That, my friends, is a um, is a really great example of. Uh, the whole idea of niches to grow riches, like that if you really focus in on something that uh, that's where you find your audience that works for books too. So very yeah. nice. I love that. Love that. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and do our first 20 minute sprint. And when we come back, we are going to talk about doing all the things and the kind of stress around that and how to like deal with the feeling of overwhelm. But first, we're going to do some writing sprints. We're going to just clear our little brains out and just write like the wind for 20 minutes. So here we go. Getting started right. with our very first sprint today, starting in three, two, one. Let's hit it.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Let me get rid of this little thing. So let us know in the chat if you have not already what you are what you are going to be working on today. How was your first sprint, Michelle and Robert? It was good. Pretty good. <clears throat> That's good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Ditto for me. <laughs> How about you guys? Let us know. I thought this was funny. Uh, uh, Avi had said, you have your brand on lock <laughs> sherlock retro typewriters <laughs> keyboards lightsabers uh-huh absolutely absolutely very very nice so our topic today is what to do when you feel like you're buried by your to-do list is it i know it's not just me i know everybody feels this way at some point um what do you do aside from <laughs> like getting into bed and eating those special heath bar cookies from Publix? as an example. <laughs> so, so, so what do you guys do when you're feeling that sort of overwhelm? Well, Lately, can... the first thing I... Go ahead, Robert. No, you go ahead. I, I'm, I've got a bit of a story, so go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I used to... I don't know why, but my logic used to be that I needed to tackle the biggest thing first, but I've realized that if I pick the thing that's going to be the fastest, then I can start crossing things off my list. And like, you know what I mean? Like it used to be like, I didn't want to save the big thing for last, but now I'm more in a place of, well, if I can just knock the smaller stuff off first, then the list looks shorter and I feel less overwhelmed. Right. And you've had, and you've had a couple of big wins. Yeah. I, there's a sort of popular business book that's called something like eat the frogs that um, the idea behind it is basically like that you do the thing that you're dreading yes. first because then you get it done and you're, because his theory is that you're wasting a lot of emotional energy and psychological energy on not doing the thing and just dreading it and putting it off and feeling guilty for putting it off and doing all that stuff. And I think there's some truth to that. Um, I really think there's some truth to that. So thank you. That's very good advice. Robert, what were you about to say? Um, I got some people mowing the lawn, so hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, we'll get back to my story in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So, um, so I think that's excellent advice. I will say that um, I had worked with a rapid resolution therapist. Uh, I don't know probably eight years ago when I was really struggling with writing. And, um, and what he had said basically was that when you're, oh, and I've mentioned this on the stream before, when you're really overwhelmed or super stressed out that your brain needs kind of a break and that you should take three days where you're basically doing nothing. And, um, and the reason that it's three days instead of like two is that your brain doesn't really start to like relax until the third day, which is why a three day weekend feels like a little mini vacation, but a regular weekend just feels like an opportunity to get crap done around the house. And that's the big difference. So I did that this past weekend. I did not work. Uh, I mean, I worked a little bit on Monday evening, but I did not work for the majority of Monday because I just felt so burned out by my massive to-do list. And I do think it helped some for sure. When I came back yesterday, like I was really very much raring to go, but I also feel like very overwhelmed by the amount of stuff I have on my to-do list. So um, John says, eat the frog, <laughs> just eat the frogs. Um, overwhelm, is this a word? Ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so for me, that was it. Like I sort of took the break and then like Michelle, like I, I tend to go with sort of quick wins first, but, um, but now I'm to the point like where I have so many things on my list and so many things that need to be done by a certain date that now I'm having to like reprioritize them. So, yeah. all right. I um, don't hear any lawnmowers, Robert, would you yeah, like to weigh in? Now, so, um, yeah, same kind of thing. And since, um, you know, I just came off the winter hiatus and, working on the draft of my own thing. And, you know, I just barely got back on the internet with a, a project that was slated for a client in April. And I immediately got like three other things and chapters to analyze. So I'm like, oh gosh. So I did the same thing. I did the chapter analysis first, got rid of the small stuff. And then I spent, you know, a solid week pushing ahead on the bigger thing and, you know, moving forward with that because 
that's what I used to do. The deadline thing, working monthly deadlines for years has taught me that I need to move ahead to save myself that anxiety. So getting that done as quickly as I can, getting mm -hmm. that margin of safety and um, sanity. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, then just, then I'm really good at marking off how much I actually have to get done per day beyond that and just chunk it out. Yeah. Don't do too much over. There's some days where I can, but then that can lead to burnout. So if I divide it into those sections, just keep working away at it. I've, I've rarely ran late on a deadline doing that. So that, in other words, time blocking, which is yes. what that's generally called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's a really fantastic solution. And the other thing I think when you're doing that is to just make sure that you're prioritizing the things that are most important to you. Because I know like when I feel stressed out, I love to head on over to Canva and make some graphics. And then before you know it, it's been 17 hours and I haven't gotten the rest of my to-do list done, but everybody's got brand new graphics. And it's just like, it's just your brain, like wanting, like needing some sort of space to relax. Um, love that. All right. So Avi's got some stuff, reward tier systems. Oh yeah. Right. Bundle. Have you, I'm, I keep hearing this about this a lot. Like I've read several articles in the last even just a couple of weeks about essentially bundling the thing you don't want to do, like going for a run every morning with something that you love, like listening to a particular mm -hmm. podcast that you don't let yourself do the, the thing you're dreading until, or you don't let you, you don't let yourself do the thing that you want uh, until you pair it with the thing that you're, you know, that you really need to get done. Uh, reward tier systems work for Avi. I have rewards based on how much I get done. Watch an episode of Downton Abbey. If I get three items done, ice cream Sunday. If I get five things done, nice. So when you're finished with Downton Abbey, Gil the Gilded Age is written by the same guy, but it's all about like New York society. You'll love it. Same, same, it's all, it hits all the same notes though. <laughs> Different country, same notes. <laughs> Uh, but I love that. Love that. Uh, Avi also said, before I tackle any huge to-do list, I take a few minutes to take the island breath because mindset is super important for follow through. Mm -hmm. The island breath. I absolutely love that. Yes. Love, love, love. Uh, yeah. And, and I do this some too. Like one of the things that I realized really early on in my career was that I would go, I used to write all week. And if I made my work count, I would write on Friday at the beach. And then I realized I write twice as fast at the beach. And so if I wrote at the beach every day, I could essentially double my word count for the week. But also it made it so much more enjoyable uh, to write. And so um, like just that, that was sort of just what natural way of doing that. Now I'm like, oh, I have editing today. So I should do that floating in my pool because I have this big like giant floaty thing that keeps you above the water. So not only does it not have to be like crazy, crazy warm and, you know, the water doesn't have to be warm, but also I'm pairing something. I actually love editing. That's pairing two things I like. That's like if I said, I'm going to edit while floating in the pool and drinking a strawberry daiquiri. I couldn't get any happier than just right there. Uh, okay. Fantastic. So Ms. Texas G has a great question. Working on the last few chapters of a rom-com, I do have a question. It's about swearing. None or is some okay? So this is going to be sort of, a, some is always okay. Well, you, some is generally okay. But mostly with romantic comedies, weirdly enough, is that the amount of swearing, acceptable swearing to the reader, correlates with the amount of sex that is uh, that is okay for the reader. So if you're writing a clean romance uh, or closed door romance, then you're going to keep the swearing level down. But if it's smutty, uh, you know, if you've got uh, steamy romance scenes uh, where you're actually, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of things, then, um, then swearing, not just in the sex scenes, but in the rest of the book is more accepted. So hopefully that helps. Uh, oh my gosh, we just got like a massive um, group of uh, comments all at the same thing, all at the same time. Uh, okay, so John says, the setting is important. I like to have people's energy around when I write like a library or cafe. Love that. It's funny too, people who've never written in public often think that the noise will distract them, but I always find that it just sort of fades into this kind of white noise 
um, background. In my own space, that kind of noise would drive me crazy, but in public, it has the exact opposite effect. Right. I think it's because, effect. yeah, I think it's because you don't know those people and you don't have to care about them. <laughs> like, there's no, like, if your cat comes in, you're going to want to know what your cat wants. Or if Georgie comes in, you're going to want to know what, you know, like, what does she want? Same thing, you know, with me and Michelle and everybody else, right? When Odie's here, he's going to command some attention. But if you're at, a bookstore, then the people talking over at the next table, unless they're being really loud and obnoxious, are you're probably not even going to know. It's all just fades into the background. I always find it really helpful to write at um, at a place like that. I do love to write at the. Often I'll go write like at a restaurant at the beach, so I get like the beautiful view, um, but I also get you know a steady steady stream of French fries. All right, Maz says rewards don't work for me. My brain only works with real deadlines. Some of us are just hardwired with like a deadline mentality. Maz, though, you can never let yourself miss a deadline ever because if you do and the world doesn't come to an end, and I'm not saying that's true, <laughs> the world will absolutely come to an end if you miss your deadline. But let's say hypothetically that you were a super deadline driven person and that some stuff happened that caused you to miss a deadline and that you never felt that urgency again. So do not ever let yourself miss a deadline. I don't know if that was a good advice or not. I'm just telling you what happens. Avi loves writing at the beach, right? Yes. This is why I have the timer so I can just channel that all the time. Miss Texas G says there's no sex. No sex, then I would uh, make sure that the swearing is... Um, you know, kept way down. I always love like the, you guys remember 30 Rock and how Liz Lemon, who was Tina Fey's character, uh, she would say things like blurg, things like that. So if you have no sex, then you can use sort of light swearing or swear replacements. Uh, but I wouldn't like have your characters drop in the F-bomb. Well, maybe one if that's the kind of character they are, but probably not. So people with people who prefer books with no uh, with closed door romance uh, generally prefer less swearing as well. All right. Avi says Odin is named after the god of war and death. You'd better give him attention. True. True. <laughs> he shall not be denied. OK, so let's go ahead. and <laughs> I just inhaled a, a tiny little hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was attached to my head. It just went. Anyway, okay, so that's kind of gross. And let's go ahead and do a sprint now. We're gonna just pop that 20 sec or 20 minute one up. Here we go, everybody. So here we go on our second sprint of the day. We're gonna make these words happen. I'm feeling really good about it. Let's get those to-do lists done and those words written. Here we go, everybody, getting started in three, two, one. Let's cha-cha.
All right. Oh, hold on. I accidentally. There we go. Uh, sorry, I muted. <laughs> I accidentally muted Robert when I was trying to unmute Michelle. Uh, <laughs> so how'd everybody do on that last sprint? <laughs> I did well. It's good to be back on my own stuff. <laughs> Isn't it? Awesome. I know I had a I had that same exact feeling when um, I had had sort of an extended drip. Oh, I just got like a fireplace video after that. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I had I had that same sort of reaction. I had been on like kind of a long stint where I was um, working on a bunch of client stuff. And then I had a bunch of my stuff that I had, you know, had to hurry up and finish before a deadline. And it like the it felt so good to just be thinking about exclude like just for the entire day rather than going back and forth, which is what I normally do. Regina is proofreading like mad. We feel ya. That's great. That's what I'm still working on. Um, and trying to get my book issues. This is the dumbest thing ever. If you are going to a book event, and you need to order books for that event. It takes longer on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Book Vault, et cetera, to get your books to you if you're buying them wholesale versus if you're just ordering them like a customer. And so just plan accordingly. Don't be like me. I This is not that I don't know this. It's that the month of April has just flown by. And I had this epiphany yesterday where I was like, oh, crap, I have not ordered books. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. So which also added to my freak out. Uh, OK, so good. Regina's proofing like mad. I'm super, super glad to hear that. Fantastic. So couple of cool things came up and I do want to talk if everybody, if anybody has more advice on or different advice on what to do when you feel like your to-do list is going to like attack you in your sleep. Um, there were some kind of interesting things that have come up in publishing um, lately. And that one of them is draft to digital has just partnered with, let me see if I can find who it is. Uh, Fable. And Fable is a book club app. And so you have to request it um, directly from draft to, detail, draft to Digital at this point. But Fable has like 25,000 book clubs, 650,000 members. And it has that app is this sort of integrated bookstore thing. It's actually going to, I think it's going to be really great for anybody who distributes through Draft to Digital. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, reach out to the folks at Draft to Digital to, you know, to see if you can um, get involved. And, uh, it was, you know, something kind of cool. I love what they're doing over there. They're always partnering with, uh, you know, new and different companies. And I just, I think what they've done for indies has been really phenomenal. Lisa, you are making me nostalgic for book events. <laughs> I have not done a reader event in a really long time. And that's part of the reason. Like I know I have a checklist. I normally, I have like a conference box. I am normally so buttoned up with this stuff. And part of it for readers take, it's my first year. I have no idea what to expect. Um, part of it's just, I I've just been completely overwhelmed with my to-do list over the last couple of months. And so I've not been really great about doing all the stuff that I need to do for that. And part of it is you sort of forget these things like, oh, yeah, you got to order your books way early. So to, in order to make sure you have them on time. And at Reader's Take Denver, like the thing is you have to have like a special cover or a special edition. And so like trying to manage all that has been kind of fun. But I, too, am nostalgic for reader events, which is why I am doing this one. I'm super excited. Plus, I have family in Denver, so I'm really excited to see everybody. All right. Regina says, I think those days are behind me way too much walking for me these days. I totally get that. Totally get that. Get a little scooter, little motorized scooter. And this is, there's Regina. So, so uh, it's 1220. If we hurry, we could get two more sprints in. If we dibble dabble around, we will not. I, um, I don't have, we usually have more questions and I did not have a bunch of questions um, this week because again, see aforementioned to-do list. So let's go ahead and set up for another sprint. And, uh, and then when we come back, we'll see what we've got. So does that sound good awesome. to you guys? Sounds yes. 
I'm like, work, work. We need, we must all work. All right, but we're having fun. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and do our next 20 minute sprint. Take that deep breath. We've got this. All right, here we go. Starting in three, two, one. Let's sprint.
All right, we are back. So I that went by so 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 fast. It did. It's so fast. Super, oh fa super fast. All right, I'm going to check our chat and our questions here. If we don't have much going on, we are going to go right back in and do one more sprint. <laughs> Oh, we don't unless uh Streamyard's messing us up again uh we do not have um another one so take a quick vote who wants to go for another quick sprint yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right everybody Absolutely. we're just gonna make <laughs> this happen all right hey. i know it's rare right no we don't usually get all the way through um yeah. for sprints yeah. so i'm super excited about that but you got i mean like i said this morning like my to-do list is long and i'm on a roll here we go everybody <laughs> let's get started i hope you're on a roll too and we're going to do our very last sprint starting in three two one make it count
We did it. We got four sprints in. I'm so proud of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I really got a ton. Like, this was so helpful for me today because, as you guys know, I was stressing out about my to-do list. And I got a big chunk of work done today. So bless the streams, man. I love, I love that. I love that. Well, I hope you guys all got a bunch of work done too. We are, um, we're a couple minutes over. And so we're going to go ahead and wrap up really quickly instead of taking more questions. But, uh, before we go, I want to say we will not be having, which I did not, hi, surprise, Michelle and Robert. We will not be having, <laughs> sorry, we won't be having a stream next week because I will be jetting off to Denver for Reader's Take Denver. Yay, I'm super excited about that. So, uh, yeah, so we won't be doing that. Uh, but anyway, we will be back in two weeks. Before we go, Michelle, please tell us a little about you and your fabulous, wonderful channel before we go today. All right. I'm Michelle Schusterman. I write young adult and middle grade novels. And my channel is writing workshops, traditional publishing chat and writing vlogs. Thank you so much for being here today. Robert, tell us a little about you and your channel before we head out today. My channel is The Story Detective, where I take various forms of storytelling and put it under a Sherlockian microscope to break down the craft for the viewer and hopefully make their journey easier. <laughs> Thanks so much, Robert. You're <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Lisa Daly. I write romantic comedy and nonfiction advice, including that gigantic new book cover I'm super excited about. And on my channel, we talk about how to write a book you're super proud of and get it published. Thanks, everybody, so much for being here today. I hope you were insanely productive. It was and good. And uh, we will see you guys back here in two weeks. Yay! Take care, Thank everybody. You, Steve. Bye, everybody. Back again until next time. That's right. <laughs>